J.R.R. Tolkien and his Lord of the Rings trilogy have had a massive impact on the fantasy genre, with many of the races featured in his books becoming staples of fantasy. Some, like orcs and hobbits, were creatures largely of his own invention, while others, such as dwarves and elves, had origins in real-world mythology, going back thousands of years. Elves in particular have a long mythology, taking many forms across various European cultures, and while they end up as the long-lived and graceful creatures of Tolkien's work, elves began in the ancient Norse legends. The elves of Norse mythology were humanoid beings, with the primary difference in appearance between them and humans being that they were considered more beautiful. In sagas, elves were commonly paired up in a phrase with the Aesir, the primary pantheon of the Norse religion. This group included Odin and Thor, as well as many of the other well-known members of the Norse pantheon. Because of this pairing, elves are considered to be associated with Aesir, particularly in their opposition to giants. It is also possible that elves were considered among the Aesir, though this is not a certainty. Outside of mythology, elves played a role in legendary sagas. This role was primarily as being the legendary ancestor of the hero who the saga was about. It is often because of this relation that the heroes are more attractive than others. Elf women also take part in these sagas, usually a sexual conquest for the hero. But outside of mythology and sagas, elves were not commonly written of. Some medical texts also made mention of elves, believing them to be the cause of a number of diseases, though most of these writings had connections to Germany, where thoughts on elves were rather different. In Germany, elves were not seen as beautiful humanoids, but rather as spirits that took the shape of a tiny human and were often classified by their color, either light or dark. These spirits were defined by their mischievous nature, and they were considered the root cause behind a number of diseases. They were also believed to cause bad dreams and to steal children and substitute the child with changelings. Unlike the Norse elves, German elves were not directly associated with religion. Most of the writings on them and belief in them occurred after Christianization, which does not include elves in any beliefs. Because of this, elves were largely classified as demons, particularly incubi, and referenced as such in a number of prayers. Some reconciled elves as angels, the side with neither God nor Lucifer, though this was a far less prevalent view. Overall, the Christianization of Europe caused changes in belief and worship of elves, from Germany to Scandinavia, where the Norse myths had spawned them. While the Norse religion had mostly been extinguished after Christianization, belief in elves remained in folklore. One of the beliefs in them was the Aldanser, or elf dance, in which the elves, mostly beautiful women, would dance in an elvringyar, or elf circles. These dancers were entrancing, and any human that watched them, while it would seem like only a few hours to them, many years would pass around them. In some stories, elves would lure humans to join the dance, eventually causing them to return years from their own time. Elves also remain in Scandinavian ballads, though the term elf would occasionally be used for what are now recognized as other mythical creatures, like mermen and dwarves. Similar to the older Norse myths, the elves in these ballads were generally focused on an asexual view. However, unlike the Norse myths, the elves of Scandinavian ballads were treated as a threat, luring people from the normal world. And while the view that elves were incupi demons were not largely shared in Scandinavia, it is possible that this view of elves as a sexual threat was influenced by the Germanic perspective. Similarly to the Germanic perspective, Scandinavian folklore also came to view elves as a source of diseases as in many stories, elves were seen as disease spirits. The most common of these diseases were skin rashes that were referred to as elven puffs that could be cured by blowing on them. To avoid getting these diseases, or otherwise protect oneself from elves, Scandinavian folklore came up with numerous methods. Elf crosses were the simplest, as it was a pentagram sigil that was carved into buildings or other objects to ward off elves. Another variant of elf cross existed in the form of an ordinary cross carved into a silver plate that was worn as a necklace. And should these methods fail to protect one from elves, treats could be offered in appeasement, with a favorite being butter. While the Scandinavian view still largely resembled the elves of Norse mythology, across the North Sea, the English perspective of elves had changed their form significantly. Following the Germanic view, elves were small humanoid creatures, though on occasion they had wings and by the Victorian era were often depicted as having pointed ears and stocking caps. Elves eventually came to be as synonymous with fairies, due in part to the works of Shakespeare, which include a number of small mythical creatures. English elves were far less aggressive than their counterparts across the seas, 
unlike in Germany, where they were tied to incubi and cause diseases, and unlike Scandinavia, where they would often trance humans and cause tragedy in their lives, English elves were most associated with mischief, and would only interact with humans to annoy them or interfere with their plans. It was in these states that the folklore belief of elves would largely end, being replaced by more widespread and far less believed depictions. In the 19th century, elves came to be associated with Christmas, from the poem A Visit from St. Nicholas, more widely known as Twas the Night Before Christmas, when St. Nicholas is referred to as a right jolly old elf. Through this reference of Santa as an elf, as well as the English translation of Die Wichtelmannen, a story in which little men help a shoemaker in his craft, elves came to be associated as Santa's toy makers, though the exact process for how this happened is unknown. However, the position of elf in the English language, with it being a synonym for fairy, certainly helped, as the little men described in Die Wichtelmannen were more similar to dwarves or brownies, but were translated into elf because brownies were considered a type of fairy. This would be the most widespread belief about elves, with the advent of popular culture, but it was not the only one. In the 20th century, J.R.R. Tolkien brought elves into the forefront of the fantasy genre, with them playing a part in his Lord of the Rings trilogy, and being the central focus of his stories in the Silmarillion. Rather than the short workshop elves that largely took after the folklore that preceded it, Tolkien's elves took from the Norse myths of their origin, being humanoid creatures with fair looks. Elves were largely similar in behavior to the human inhabitants of Middle-earth, though they were immortal save from fatal blows or loss of will to live. They also were more resistant to the environment and had better senses than humans, and had more apparent ability in the magical arts than is ever displayed by men throughout Tolkien's Legendarium. It was these elements that became the trademark of fantasy elves, with elves soon popping up in many other fantasy authors' works. While many authors made slight changes to distinguish their version of elves, the basis that Tolkien set was the standard. This standard was also used by the creators of many role-playing games and later on video games. Tolkien elves and Christmas elves are the current end of the folklore of elves. While there is still some minor belief in elves, particularly in Iceland, elsewhere belief has transitioned into holiday traditions or enjoyment of fantasy characters. Overall, elven lore has done pretty well in modern times, as major characters in numerous fantasy works, which call back to their roots in Norse mythology, and as homepoints in Christmas, where they resemble their time spent in European folklore. <laughs>